Hey folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. Nefarious is the movie we're going to discuss here on Mike's Instant Movie Review. Uh, yes, this is the new Mike Messier, uh, one Mike Messier YouTube channel where both, basically you're going to see Mike's Instant Movie Review, uh, some of the What's in the Box videos. If you're looking for my other stuff, my pro wrestling rants and uh, sports takes are now going to be on one pro wrestling and sports fan and if you're looking for mike's original films that's me go to one man in a camera films oh god so let's discuss this nefarious now why did i go see this movie you know i saw there's one of these youtube guys that i watch all the time his name is uh, officer tatum he has some pretty uh, i think he's got a good youtube channel very good he kind of keeps me updated on current events and uh, the political stuff of the day and in a digestible format he does videos that are about seven minutes each three a day and uh, you know him and a bunch of others are people that I watch for my news um, as opposed to the traditional you know one hour news block but uh, Tatum has been on the uh, he's been getting some product placements and one of his product placements was basically a commercial for this movie nefarious and uh, Officer Tatum put it over. I'm assuming he saw it himself. And it would be a movie that he would like. And I say that uh, because Officer Tatum is a man of faith, a man of Jesus. And this movie does have some themes like that in an interesting way. Uh, so should, should you go see this movie or not? Um, it's kind of a tough one. I think some people will get a lot out of it. Some people might not or probably won't. Um, I'm afraid it might be one of those preaching to the choir type movies, but then there's also, I think, Christian people who won't like this movie anyway because of the way that the uh, information is presented. And the best thing I can do to um, make a reference here, I believe it was C.S. Lewis wrote something called The Screw Tape Letters which I think I've, I've glanced at, but I haven't sat there and read the whole thing. And I think what that was is... And you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because I'm going by memory. And like I said, I've never sat there and read the whole screw tape letters. I think it was like the, a guy is writing the devil or the devil's writing God or some such thing. And um, so I think basically they're trying to prove uh, evil exists and uh, Satan is bad and all this stuff by embodying the voice of Satan himself. That's in the screw tape letters. In this particular movie, it's not necessarily Satan, but it's a demon, uh, as they describe it. A demon who's on death row in the form of uh, the human being, I believe the name is Eddie, that he's possessed. And Eddie's now on death row for killing, I believe, four people with another uh, four that have not been discovered. And so, the movie kind of comes at us from the perspective of the state-issued psychiatrist who has to go and evaluate uh, this individual and determine if he's fit, fit to be killed, basically. It's kind of interesting. You have to prove that the person is not insane in order for the state to, to execute, which uh, I believe the movie takes place in Texas. I'm pretty sure it was filmed in Texas as well. And it is kind of one of those interesting things where if someone has it in them to kill not one, not two, not three, but four people with another four that haven't been revealed, you would think there'd be some level of insanity that's just understood there. But I think what they're trying to say, and, and this is beyond the movie, but also the, the legalities of it in real life, um, if someone's mentally ill, if they're, you know, have a psychotic illness, they're not to be held accountable uh, to the point of killing them, but being in prison for the rest of their life. And call me crazy, folks, but, you know, if it was me, I'd rather be fucking killed than live in prison for the rest of my life. Uh, no offense, but I mean, I just, if I was in that situation, and I hope I never will be, and I probably won't be, because I'm not a violent person, <laughs> but I mean, I'd rather be fucking fried or fucking lethal injected then wake up every morning in a fucking cell with some scumbag cellmate 
and you know you brush your teeth in the toilet and all this other shit that they talk about on you know the scared straight shows and if you ever watched the, one of my favorite sh shows back in the day oz not the wizard of oz but the the hbo prison drama i think it was better than the sopranos and six feet under and everything else people don't talk about six feet under anymore and they don't talk about oz oz was a great show uh that's something that i like to see rebooted with the new cast all right so moving forth let's get back to this movie nefarious the demon, uh, so the state-issued psychiatrist who would rather be anywhere but here, he's sent to this, you know, jail, the maximum security prison, to basically evaluate this guy who's going to be electrocuted because he's opted for the electric chair. And um, what he discovers when he goes in to evaluate this guy, first of all, why is he there? Well, the previous state-issued psychiatrist apparently has committed suicide. Uh, and the guy that was evaluating this criminal this guy on death row eddie over and over again apparently drew him nuts and the warden of the prison gives our new guy here uh the 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 donkey eye the heads up i like that term the donkey eye he gives him the donkey eye that if you try to evaluate this fucker eddie you're gonna end up feeling crazy before you know it and uh that's what's led to the death of the previous psychiatrist so we finally get him in there. We finally get our psychiatrist in there. He's Eddie, meanwhile, the convict. He's basically uh, handcuffed to the table. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, they start their whole back and forth. And Eddie reveals that he's actually a demon uh, who I believe he calls himself uh, Nefarioso, which roughly translates to not... Um, not nefarious but one that is nefarious which i thought was a little interesting detail one that has the quality of being nefarious as opposed to just a straight out translation of nefarious so uh, that was interesting to me uh the movie you know we start off in kind of this uh slow i wouldn't say slow but just this long scene of these two guys back and forth and I'm going to talk about a, another movie in another review today, The Artifice Girl or Artifice Girl by a person I actually know, Franklin Rich. And uh, both of these movies have kind of the same little trap there where you spend a lot of time, uh, you know, someone's texting me uh, and I'll, I'll I mean, I, but I can't text and do this. So we're in this nefarious thing. And uh, these two people are going back and forth. And it's revealed that this Eddie guy, the criminal, is actually possessed by Nefaria. So the demon, the psychiatrist doesn't believe him. But then Eddie starts giving all these important history lessons about his life. And he gives him a little curse. He says, before the end of the day, you will have killed three people. And the psychiatrist guy is, no, that's not going to happen. And so, should I spoil it? Because here comes the big spoil. The spoil is he's going to uh, reveal that the psychiatrist guy basically like took his mother off life support. Uh, I think that's the first one. The second one is, uh, or maybe he had his mother like sent to, no, his mother was in Oregon. He, he helped with the state assisted suicide or whatever the fuck. Um, the second one, euthanasia. The second one is his girlfriend's pregnant and his, his girlfriend got an abortion and the psychiatrist guy was all for the abortion. And the third one was he sentencing this guy to death. And so the big issue, this really pisses off the psychiatrist, but it's like, am I dealing with Nefariaso or am I dealing with Eddie? And uh, the way that the religious stuff comes in here, similar to the screw tape letters, is Nefariaso or Eddie goes through all these uh, situations of tormenting the guy and um, basically grinding his gears. And uh, basically it's like, oh, you start to believe this fucker. You start to believe Nefariaso that he is a demon. But of course he's, as the demon, as the evil one, he's making all these pronunciations of why people like the psychiatrist who are atheists are, you know, missing out on the whole big religion Jesus thing. 
So that's it. I mean, should I go further? I thought the actors did a pretty good job. I mean, the guy that's playing Eddie slash Nefariaso, it's one of those things where if you talk to anyone that's really experienced with acting, most of us would tell you, not everyone, but acting crazy is one of the easiest things to do. Um, yes, people like Jack Nicholson, one, you know, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and other films, but acting like criminally insane is actually fairly easy for, for actors with experience uh, because it's just like anything goes, you know what I mean? Uh, the guy playing the psychiatrist, I thought he did a nice job. These were actors of some name value. I, of Sean Flattery or something, I can't totally remember. It did seem like a lower budgeted film. I mean, not total low budget, but fairly low budget. Um, not a whole lot of locations. We're basically in the prison. And then at the, there's a Glenn Beck makes a fucking appearance in this thing. So yes, it is have some, you know... Christian overtures or whatever the fuck you want to call it, right-wing overtures. Glenn Beck plays Glenn Beck. And apparently there really was a book, uh, The Nefarious Plot. So would I go out and read that book? Probably not. Just because I've got an audible with like 12 books in in back order. I write my own books, as you know, A Distance from Avalon, Fighter Play Basketball. I have about 200 books, like real printed books I have to read. Uh, so... But yeah, was the movie good? It was, it was good. A little sluggish, that, that whole long conversation. A little theatrical in the sense of it felt like the writing was maybe better suited for the stage. Uh, but I get it. When you have a low budget and you're working with, you know, just a couple of locations and a couple of actors, uh, although they did get the most out of this prison thing, I thought they did a great job, and the actual electrocution scene, because they have old Sparky in this thing, the electric chair, I thought it was all pretty effective for what it was, but still, it's not a big, exciting movie. It's a thinking person's movie. Uh, I don't know if this movie you could show to some atheist person and they're going to say, oh, praise Jesus after this. I think that's the intent of the movie is to provoke some thought. But I do think similar to that movie I saw a few weeks ago about the... Um, the demonic possession fighting church in Nashville, um, I'm afraid that this is another preach to the choir type of thing. It's very difficult to change people's minds about stuff these days and film, you know, good luck. I mean, I'm not opposed to people trying because that's what art's all about is making people think of different perspectives. But when the agenda is really clear that they're trying to change people and make believers out of non-believers, I don't know if that will happen with Nefarious. Uh, out of five stars, I'd probably give it, you know, two and a half or three. Uh, but yeah, I, I give them credit, plop, 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 for the great acting. I thought great acting. Eddie, the guy that played Eddie slash Nefarious, did have a challenge. I guess I would like to play a role like that, to be honest with you, because I think I could do that too. Um, the psychiatrist guy was good. The uh, people in the prison, like the warden, was really good. Uh, Glenn Beck was fine as himself. So that's it. Uh, Mike Messier won. Mike Messier, you'll see all of Mike's instant movie reviews. The best movie I've seen lately is The Covenant, or Covenant, I should say, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. All right, see you later.